now that the Super Mario Brothers movie is out, I guess that's all the Haza talks I could do. Now to kick back and relax. <sighs> you sure about that, Bucko? What the fu- So, GameBot showed me this. And I guess I haven't done a Haza talk on the Sonic movies yet. Until now. I only gave those movies a few mentions in the first two videos, so here we are. We're talking about them now. By the time of writing this, the Super Mario Bros. movie is already out in theaters, which is going to be released digitally on May 16th this year. And the Knuckles the Echidna show on Paramount Plus is in filming production. Now, I'm starting to feel like people are probably not going to love the Sonic movies as much as Mario's anymore, due to how that movie is fully animated while the Sonic movies were just live-action CGI hybrid films. But the question is, how do we get to this point? So far, Sonic has two movies, and the third movie is going to release on December 20th, 2024. But this production story is a filmmaking legend. I was there, and it was a mess. And that is precisely why I returned to help Hotsa revisit this development tale. Ladies and gents, this is the downfall and rise of the Sonic the Hedgehog movie. It all started around 2015, around the time when Sonic the Hedgehog games had a bad reception among fans. Like, Sonic Boom Rise of Lyric was considered the worst Sonic game to exist, but I don't know if it's worse than Sonic 06. Either way, the Sonic games in the series have been struggling to be good, and people thought Sonic is failing as both a series and career. But in 2013, yeah a couple of years back, Sony Pictures acquired the rights to make a Sonic the Hedgehog featured film. This caught everyone by surprise when they announced it. It was going to be a live action CGI hybrid film set to release on June 10th, 2014. And the people involved with the project were none other than Marza Animation Planet, the team who did the best animation of all time, the opening cutscene in Sonic Unleashed. Oh, and not only were they involved, but Blur Studios got hired for the filmmaking too. Those are the people who made the CGI cutscenes for Shadow the Hedgehog and... Uh, Sonic 06. Yeah, the Sonic fans always say those games are bad and all, but you gotta admit, the CGI cutscenes looked great. What I'm saying is that they actually got the right people for the job, some good animation teams. We also got Josh Miller and Tim Miller as the writers for the movie's story, and of course, Jeff Fowler as a director. That wasn't until we got radio silence from the movie for the first five years, until the Sonic movie team announced the movie was now owned by Paramount. I wonder why. Okay, now I get it. Yeah. Now, I don't know if it was because of the Emoji movie or not, but whatever. At least now the movie actually began production this time. And so far, we got a confirmed casting list. We got the official voice actor for Sonic, Ben Schwartz, and Jim Carrey as Dr. Eggman? What? I know, crazy, ain't it? I don't exactly remember how I reacted to Jim Carrey being cast as Robotnik, because it was a long time ago. But I believe I was sold on that because, well, Jim's a hilarious actor. I mean, come on, you can't go wrong with Ace Adventura, The Grinch, and the voice behind Horton the Elephant, right? Good luck with your illusion of superiority. Yeah! And we also got James Marston as policeman Tom Wachowski. Um, hold on. I don't remember a cop being in the Sonic games. Did we do more research? Uh, the Sonic Adventure games would like to have to work with you. Plus, there's that Japanese exclusive arcade game called Waku Waku Sonic Patrol Car, where Sonic plays the role as a police officer. But I doubt anybody remembers that. Anyways, the production finally started happening, but the concern had spread among people, worrying about what Sonic was going to look like. Some past live-action CGI movies resulted in odd design choices. Actually, not all of them are odd, just questionable. A perfect example was Alvin and the Chipmunks, the Smurfs, and the live-action Garfield movies. But, in an interview with Patrick Casey and Tails Channel, they said that Sonic would still look like Sonic, except a little more realistic. <sighs> A little more realistic, they said. <laughs> yeah, that spawned a lot of joke fan art. But in December 2018, there was something that everyone treated like a joke, and it's this. Oh God! My God! S so 
Aquatic? Where is he? Are you talking about this guy? No way you're talking about this guy. This is the poster that started this whole mess. The thighs, the small hands, and the human anatomy. And the incorrect ring sound effects too! Wait, that's not important. What the hell were you thinking, Paramount? But why this? This looks nothing like Sonic. That's an imposter. Throw it off the ship. Did you really have to go there? What? People won't stop making Among Us jokes, so after us, well, Moving on. his face wasn't fully visible as it was shown in the darkness. So they would most likely reveal the full look in the trailer. So I thought, okay, let's not jump to conclusions. Maybe when the trailer is out, it will look better. I tried to be positive, but it faded. Later, on April 30th, 2019, the first trailer of the Sonic movie was released. And what did everybody think about it? Well, uh... Yeah, just roll the clip. SFPD! Uh... Meow? No! No! Get back! Get back! Get back! For the record, I actually didn't react like that at all. I thought it looked fine at first, because I didn't know any better. Heck, I even drew fan art of that ugly design, and when I posted it on Instagram, people said that I made it look better. But looking back at that manhawk now... Ugh, why? This hideous freak of nature! How was it okay to have this as the main design? And why didn't they just use Sonic's model from the games as the main design? Okay, admittedly, it does make sense for other live-action CGI movies to make certain characters look like they can exist in real life. Yeah, Sonic needed to look real, but not that real! It does make sense on paper, but the results were just awful! The small eyes, the human teeth, and the bottom lip. That was just ugly! In fact, the fans had given him the name Ugly Sonic. Yeah, the design looked like an abomination horse crap! And it massacred our poor boy Sonic! Why?! As for the rest of the trailer though, the actors did a good job and the story was pretty basic. Basic, but good nonetheless. It's just that human rat design that everybody hated. After the trailer released, people continued to trash talk on the design and they just gave up hope. They said that the movie was going to end up in failure all because of the ugly design. I tried to be excited for the movie, but I just decided that I'm not going to watch it due to how ugly Sonic look. <sighs> I'm gonna go sit on my couch and be depressed, knowing that Sonic's movie is gonna be bad. <whistles> huh? What? What? Wait, what? Hey, let me see! <gasps> on May 2nd, 2019, Jeff Fowler made an announcement on Twitter. He said here, Thank you for your support and the criticism. The message is loud and clear. You aren't happy with the design and you want changes. It's going to happen. Everyone at Paramount and Sega are fully committed to making this character the best he can be. Hashtag Sonic movie. Hashtag gotta fix fast. Woo! That came out of freaking nowhere. Jeff Feller straight up came out and announced that Paramount was going to fix Sonic's design for the movie. Normally some movie companies just don't care about the fans and ignore their criticisms. They just stick with whatever they come up with, and they would later receive some bad reviews. But with this, this right here, Jeff Fowler and Paramount were very passionate about the project, and they refused to let the movie fail, all because of a failed science experiment of a Sonic design. This was Paramount's chance to redeem themselves, and it looked like they got to work right away. Because on May 24th, 2019, Jeff Fowler announced that the Sonic movie was going to be delayed to February 14th, 2020 with a teaser image of what Sonic's redesign would look like. He's got his gloves back. But if you look closely at this artwork, it looks like it was done by Sonic artist Tyson Hess. People were saying his arms are still blue, but that doesn't really matter anymore. This was a more proper step for Paramount, delaying the movie so they could have more time to fix Sonic's design, as well as reanimating the movie with the new model. So now, we all had to go through a huge wait. Gotta let the cake bake in the oven to make sure it's nice and not set the oven on fire. <laughs> on November 12th, 2019, Paramount officially released the second trailer for the Sonic movie. Let's see if they actually fixed the design this time. Here, let's take a look. I'm Sonic, a little ball of super energy. 
in an extremely handsome package. On my planet, people were always after my powers. So I came to yours. Uh... Oh. My. God! That looks so much better! Holy crap! Paramount, you did it. You actually fixed your mistakes. Sonic looks much better. The reputation was really positive, and everyone loved the redesign. Literally everyone loved it. Like, if you take a look at everybody's reaction videos, you can see how relieved they were with the changes. Not only that, but they made a better trailer than the first one, too. I mean, come on, Gangsta's Paradise? It's a good song, don't get me wrong, but it did not fit the aesthetic at all. But Blitzkrieg Bop, now that was a better song choice. Very good remix, too. Now, there was a conspiracy theory going on that Paramount was going to use the redesign all along and they purposely made Sonic's design bad to get attention from fans. Honestly, I don't believe Paramount would pull a publicity stunt like that. Was there any movie company that pulled a stunt like that before? I'm not quite sure, actually. Feel free to tell us in the comments below if there are any. Yeah, that theory ended up not being true. Plus, there were toys made for the Sonic movie with the ugly design. If they had the redesign all along, they would have used it on the merchandise. Uh, not only that, there's also that Halloween costume that the company who made it refused to get rid of. Oh, and that creepy mask too. Good luck trying to eat your popcorn with that on. Yeah, just wanted to get that out of the way. The movie was finally released in theaters on February 14th, 2020. Literally Valentine's Day. And it became a box office success. And above all else, it became one of the video game movies that broke the notorious video game movie curse, next to Pokemon Detective Pikachu. Yeah, everyone loved the Sonic movie. It proceeded to be in theaters for a month until... COVID happened. Oh, yeah. The movie was released during the pre-coronavirus era, yeah. And after that whole pandemic, the movie had eventually beaten Avengers Endgame as the highest grossing superhero movie. Yeah, those days weren't the best. That was back when movie theaters started closing and the Sonic movie released on streaming services early. Yep, on March 31st, 2020. And then the Blu-ray copies were released on May 19th. They came with some pretty cool bonus content, like some behind the scenes stuff, storyboard sequences, bloopers, and some... Uh... Interesting deleted scenes? <laughs> Ugh. <clears throat> but now with that whole thing out of the way, what else was there to look forward to? Well, in February 2021, Paramount surprised us all with this. We knew this was coming. After the booming success of the first film, Jeff Fowler and Paramount announced a sequel to the movie. This was exciting for Sonic fans. It was set to release on April 8th, 2022. There were even some leaked behind the scenes footage and on-set pictures during the production. We got statue shots of Sonic, Tails, and... Knuckles? What? Yeah, we later hear from the official Sonic movie Twitter that Idris Elba was gonna voice Knuckles the Echidna. What an unexpected surprise! But before we got Idris Elba as Knuckles, Paramount offered Jason Momoa, aka the actor for Aquaman, to have the part. But nope, never happened. Now, something interesting happened while the movie was being made. Around the time the Super Mario movie cast was revealed, the official Sonic movie Twitter posted this. See you at the Oscars. Yeah, this did not age well. <laughs> yeah. It was a good roast at the time, but looking back at this now, they probably should have kept their mouths shut. But more on that later. On December 9th, 2021, the first trailer of the Sonic movie sequel was revealed during the Game Awards, and holy crap, it was amazing. We got the game accurate Eggman, the Master Emerald, and our first look at Knuckles. Let me just say, Idris Elba did amazing as Knuckles. Do I look like I need your power? <laughs> that was fun. Yes, we were hooked. But after that trailer, Sonic Frontiers was also announced. So we had both the movie sequel and a new mainline Sonic game to look forward to. Those weren't the only things to look forward to though. Back on February 15th, 2022, literally before the second movie was even released, the third movie was announced alongside the Knuckles spin-off show we mentioned earlier. They must be really confident 
that Sonic the Hedgehog 2 would succeed in the box office when they wanted to do another movie and a TV show. This wouldn't have happened if it weren't for the redesign. Totally. When it comes to certain characters, you have to make them look good and appealing to your audience, and maybe your series will have a better future. Later, on April 8, 2022, Sonic the Hedgehog 2 was finally released in theaters. I actually went to an early screening the day before, and the movie was way better than expected. Way better than the first movie. It became the second highest grossing video game movie ever. Hey, yep. It has more lore, more characters, more references, great cinematography, good morals, and overall, a fantastic story. Well, at least in my opinion, this movie had left a lot of us in awe. Everyone was super satisfied and had hope for the Sonic movie series going forward. What's that? What happened to Ugly Sonic after that? Well... They'll like me for who I am. Not like last time when the internet got one look at my human teeth and burned the place down. Yikes. He really put on a few pounds there. But hey, at least I didn't ruin the movie he was in. Chip and Dale Rescue Rangers. That was a great movie, by the way. Yeah. Ugly Sonic making a return happened out of nowhere. This is a Disney movie. And I don't know if Ugly Sonic was Paramount's property. But then again, Sonic in general is Sega's property. Yeah, true. Sonic did appear in Disney's Wreck-It Ralph 1 and 2. It's actually pronounced Wi-Fi, Ralph. Yeah, that's what I said. And Wi-Fi is the internet. Now, here's the concerning part. People actually thought Sonic the Hedgehog 1 and 2 were going to be way better than the Super Mario Brothers movie. But they were wrong. Oh, so wrong. After the Mario movie was released on April 5th of the year after, some people started having doubts about the Sonic movies. And they're probably gonna think the Mario movie is superior to those two films now. I mean, think about it. The Mario movie made way more money, and they stayed very true to the source material. Yeah, Sonic, Tails, Knuckles, and Eggman were there, as well as the Chaos Emeralds. But those were just it. No music references, no Angel Island, and unknown characters like Longclaw, Agent Stone, and even Tom. They were likable though. And yeah, I do like Tom and Maddie. They just weren't part of the Sonic games. But there's one thing that we should give the Sonic movies credit for, which is how they saved Sonic's reputation. You see, the sales of his games started booming up again after the success of those movies, and Sega and Sonic Team decided to start taking their games seriously again, and thus, Sonic Frontiers was made. Yeah, you could tell the movies had influenced Sonic Team greatly. I mean, look at the combat moves, and the short cutscene for when Sonic collects all the rings. You could not tell us that they remind you of the movies. This game ended up becoming the best modern Sonic game since Sonic Generations. It was the big redemption arc for the Sonic franchise everyone wanted. This leads us to today, where the Knuckles Paramount Plus show is currently filming as we speak. We got the plot of the show, and for some reason, some fans thought it's dumb. Knuckles agrees to train Wade as his protege and teach him the ways of the Echidna Warrior. Knuckles trains Wade? Wade? Why Wade of all characters? I mean, we know Wade is kind of a silly moron, but Knuckles could possibly help Wade become a better man in his own way. And maybe a little more competent. Yeah, but people wanted Rouge or the Chaotix. Fans are quick to jump to conclusions saying the plot is going to be stupid. <sighs> when will people ever learn to not jump the gun all the time? This generation never fails to make me shake my head. But I agree, I would like to see Rouge in the show too. Maybe they're keeping her a surprise until they're almost done with production? Who knows? I guess we'll have to wait and see, GameBot. So, that's pretty much it. We went through the entire timeline of the development of Sonic's feature films. With the almost failed adaptation to the most successful adaptation of the franchise. Hopefully, the Sonic movie series future will get better as time goes on. We still have the third movie to look forward to next year, in December. And who knows, maybe they can learn from the Mario movie and make it good. I think he means he wants the third movie to respect the source material more. <laughs> yeah, that, that's exactly what I meant. But yeah, let's also hope the future of the Sonic franchise will stay great, since the movie's pretty much saved the day. Well, GameBot, thanks for joining again, and thank you all so much for watching! Huh? The Hedgehog and the Plumber had their fun on the big screen, but now it is my turn. 
<laughs> Scott Cawthon, we're in for the long run. Oh boy. <laughs>